I'm like 50 drafts in at this point, ladies and gentlemen. I'm having way too much fun drafting these teams in 2023, but I wanted to go through and outline some of the most drafted running backs that I have this year. In my mind, the best values you can currently get in underdog drafts. But before we get into these guys, make sure you're going down there. Drop any like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you play fantasy football. And of course, if you want to get in a best ball draft today, that's zero time commitment during the year. That's how I drafted over 700 teams on underdog last year. Won over $150,000. You can hop into best Best Ball Mania on Underdog Fantasy. They just launched their main tournament, $25 buy-in, $15 million prize pool. Available in like 45, 46 states. Available everywhere in Canada, outside of Ontario. And when you sign up with promo code FLOCK, you are going to get a 100% deposit match up to $100. And on top of that, right now, they've had a ton of NBA free bets. I mean, for tonight, they have LeBron James more than less than half a total point. I'm not an NBA scout, but I'd imagine that LeBron James scores a point this next game. You can find that link in the description and the comment section if you want to check out any of those free bets or if you want to get in a draft with us on the live stream. But let's go ahead and let's dive into our first back here. Let's look at Najee Harris. Now, y'all have heard me say it over and over and over again in these live streams. What I'm trying to do in these drafts is I'm trying to hammer in a wide receiver in round one, a wide receiver in round two. That way we can take advantage of the beautiful mid-round running back values that we have this season. We're right now looking at Najee Harris as a fourth round pick in underdog drafts. Currently has an ADP behind Debo Samuel, an ADP behind Calvin Ridley, Jameer Gibbs, and Amari Cooper. He is currently being drafted directly before DJ Moore and DeAndre Hopkins. And in my mind, this is a no-brainer selection. While Najee Harris was a very bad pick in round one last year, you should have listened to us. You shouldn't have drafted him. In round four, it's a completely different cost for the same player that we are getting. If we're going back and looking at Najee Harris through the first two years of his NFL career, this is a running back that on average has been the running back 14 from a points per game basis, which yes, I mean, you're looking at the running back 14 from a points per game basis and you're saying, well, Mason, that's where he's being drafted this year. How is he a strong value by any means? But if we're diving a little bit deeper into the profile, this is a running back that's averaging a little over 17 carries. He's averaging about four and have targets a game we know he gets involved in the red zone and overall he is just a three down player that does not come off the field now we did see that dip in overall production this past year for Najee Harris and there are a couple different reasons for this we know the first one being is hell he went into the season injured Najee Harris was not at 100% this past season. We remember that during the preseason, a lot of people were talking about the possibility of Najee Harris missing a large chunk of games. Well, with Najee Harris, the thing we have to understand about him is he does not miss football games. He will play through anything. And I know that sounds like we're exaggerating, blah, blah, blah. But if we're going to go through and look at a quick injury history of Najee Harris, 2018, he misses some practice because of a foot injury. I mean, 2018 as well, he has an ankle sprain. 2019, another ankle sprain. He has another foot injury. 2021, he's an elbow sprain. 2022, he's a Liz Frank, obviously, at the very beginning of this season. Then he pulls an abdomen muscle at the middle part of 2022. And with all those injuries, he missed zero games. With Najee Harris... Going back to his time at Alabama, he missed zero games in 2018, zero games in 2019, zero games in 2020. In the NFL, zero games 2021, zero games in 2022. The last time Najee Harris missed the football game was 2017. The man is a tank. He does not miss time. So he was playing through an injury last year, which obviously impacted his efficiency, but what also had an impact on the efficiency of Najee Harris is the fact that he was playing behind one of the worst offensive lines in the entire NFL. But the Pittsburgh Steelers have gone out of their way to make sure that this is not going to be the case this next year. I mean, they go through and they assign a left guard from the Philadelphia Eagles, who obviously had the best offensive line in the NFL last season, and then they trade up for Broderick Jones, pick 14 in this year's draft. So they're going out of their way, improving the offensive line in Pittsburgh. And on top of this, now we are going to have significantly better quarterback play in year two of Kenny Pickett compared to what we had this past season. Because at the beginning of this past year, we had to deal with Mitchell Trubisky. 
obviously not great. And then when we had Kenny Pickett come in, he wasn't good either. Kenny Pickett was dead last this past season from an adjusted yards per pass attempt standpoint. And we've seen this time and time again. Rookie quarterbacks, they're not good. Can't really expect anything from your rookie QB. So if you're looking at this Najee Harris profile, instead of having to draft him round one this year, where he was going last season, we're getting him round four in underdog drafts. On top of this, he's going to have an offensive line upgrade. On top of this, he's going to have a better quarterback play. On top of this, he's not going to be playing through an injury. And we have the security knowing that Najee Harris doesn't miss football games. Just like how Josh Jacobs was our most drafted running back last year when he was going round six, round seven. I think that honestly, too many people have convinced themselves that Najee Harris is a bad running back for whatever reason. I mean, right now, the Pittsburgh Steelers don't do anything to address the depth chart. So they only have Jalen Warren and Anthony McFarlane behind them. I'm going all in on Najee Harris round four this year. Now, someone else that I'm going to be drafting a lot that I didn't draft last season and I need to sit here and take my L, Damian Pierce. With Damian Pierce, I was an idiot not to be drafting him this past year. We were looking at the fact that he was going round six, and I was saying, okay, well, why the hell am I going to draft a running back that was a day three draft pick going to one of the worst offenses in the NFL in round six because of some rookie offseason hype? Well, I should have because he was great, right? Damian Pierce this past year was the running back 21 from a points per game perspective. He accounted for over 70% of the team's carries on a per game basis this past season. He accounted for almost a 10% team target share as well. And in a horrendous Houston Texans offense with Davis Mills under center, the man averaged about 85 total yards per game. We are getting this profile (laughs) right ahead of Chris Godwin and Brandon Ayuk in drafts, directly ahead of DeAndre Swift. And if we look at what the Houston Texans did this offseason, yeah, they bring in Devin Singletary, right? But a big thing I want to be looking at with this Houston Texans depth chart is behind Damian Pierce going into this offseason, they literally had nothing. They didn't have a body back there that they could ever comfortably give a football. So if you were the Houston Texans, you were presented with a couple different opportunities. You could either A, sign a backup running back in free agency for a very small amount of money, Or B, you could see what's there in the NFL draft. And then if all of a sudden you really want to take Zach Charbonnet round two to then at that point be in a running back by committee with Damian Pierce, maybe instead you get, I don't know, I mean, Bijan Robinson falling to you, pick 12, you go ahead and you take Bijan there. I mean, maybe you could go down that path and you could replace Damian Pierce if you really wanted to. But instead, they went with path numero uno. They decided to just go out there and sign a backup running back in Devin Singletary. They give Devin Singletary absolutely no money whatsoever, indicating that Damian Pierce is the starting guy. Now, I've heard from a couple different people telling us, Mason, you're wrong with Damian Pierce. Six round Damian Pierce isn't that good of value because you have to understand that this coaching staff comes from San Francisco. They're going to go through and they're going to look to play running back by committee. Okay, a couple different things. One, are we that confident that the defensive coordinator for the 49ers is going to want to be able to come in and have a running back by committee? He's the defensive coordinator. How much is he really going to be impacting the utilization of these running backs? And how much does being the defensive coordinator for Kyle Shanahan impact that decision for you? In my mind, it's not true. In my mind, it's people just spitting a broken narrative and it's something that we shouldn't really be worrying about. And instead, we should worry about the actions taken by the Houston Texans and this overall front office this offseason. And those actions, in my mind, have shown that they are relying on Damian Pierce as their starter this next year. And very similar to Najee Harris, Damian Pierce should be in a better situation this next season. Damian Pierce will end up having C.J. Stroud under center. I like this for a couple different reasons. One, C.J. Stroud isn't going to run the ball a ton. So we know that when the pocket collapses, unlike maybe Justin Fields, who can actually go out there and run it himself, C.J. Stroud is going to have to dump the ball off to the back, out of the backfield, which should boost the overall target share that Damian Pierce sees in this offense. Two, the main reason that I like it is at the end of the day, if you're looking at Damian Pierce, What we want to see is we want to see a good offense in general that is going to be able to move the ball down the field. I don't think you would have had that with Davis Mills. I think you have a chance of that with C.J. Stroud. 
So I'm going to be completely fine going through and betting on Damian Pierce in round six. Now going over to our next guy, this is probably the number one player that we've had people leaving comments about, Joe Mixon. With Joe Mixon, in underdog drafts, right when those tournaments launched for this season, he was going round seven. Now, Joe Mixon has risen in drafts, but he's only risen by a little bit. Now, Joe Mixon's going in round six of underdog drafts. He's currently the running back 22 off the board. He is currently going behind Chris Godwin, Brandon Ayuk, and DeAndre Swift. I mean, he's going directly ahead of Dallas Goddard, Tyler Lockett, and Isaiah Pacheco. So if you're looking at this mix in value, I mean, this is something that you're having to push the button on. And instead of going down to the comment section and screaming at me how bad this is to have Joe Mixon here, hell, if you think it's that bad that Joe Mixon's being drafted at this pick, why don't you just fire up underdog fantasy and go draft him in the fifth round every single time if you want to, because you could if you really did. Now, going over to the three-year window that we have into Joe Mixon's past seasons, you're looking at a running back that's finished as the running back six running back seven, and running back 11 from a per game perspective. If we're going to be looking at the overall averages that we have with this workload, you're looking at a running back that averages about 70% of the carries on a per game basis in Cincinnati, about a 12% team target share, which this is the number one thing that was an improvement for Joe Mixon this past season. He did take a step back rushing the football, but Joe Mixon was able to average over five targets a game this past season for the Cincinnati Bengals. Something that we've never really seen from Joe Mixon outside of his time at OU. So it's crazy to see this level of involvement as a pass catcher. This is an elite offense. The Cincinnati Bengals haven't done anything at running back outside of bringing in Chase Brown to replace Samaj P. Ryan. So if you're looking at Mixon, I think round six Mixon is probably one of the more comfortable bets that you could be making right now. And in general, this is how I want to be outlining our overall draft strategy currently on underdog. The way that I've been finding the most success, this is what we did last year and how we printed money last season and how I think we are probably going to be winning again this next year is when everybody wants to go to the comment section and say, oh, you can't grab a running back in the dead zone. I mean, running backs in rounds five, six, seven are horrible. And while yes, that was true five years ago, while yes, that was true six years ago, seven years ago, eight years ago, back when you should have been avoiding the running backs in the dead zone. Now that everybody is going through and talking about that, it's flipped on its head. It used to be that back in the day, you wanted to grab your anchor running backs in rounds one and two and then slam mid-round wide receiver value. But now that everybody has realized, okay, yeah, um, if you wanted to win fantasy football leagues in 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, that's what you should have done. Now people are overreacting and you're getting absurd values such as Joe Mixon in the sixth round. So yeah, that's why in drafts, I'm going out there and I'm trying to get a wide receiver in round one, in round two. That way we can take advantage of this middle round running back value. Now going over to our next guy, I, I really love this profile. Alexander Madison. With Madison, this is a running back that I find myself drafting year in and year out because if Dalvin Cook does not play, you automatically know Alexander Madison is going to win you your week. If Dalvin Cook does not play, not only does Alexander Madison take that Dalvin Cook volume, but he also contributes the usual stat line that he would have had in his uh, fantasy football matchup. So if Dalvin Cook misses, you pretty much get guaranteed 20 touches a game from Alexander Madison, and that's going to be involved as a pass catcher as well as a rusher. And right now, if we were looking at Dalvin Cook, you've seen some rumors like, oh my gosh, Dalvin Cook is getting traded to the Miami Dolphins. Dalvin Cook's getting traded. I don't know if Dalvin Cook's actually going to get dealt, but knowing that it's a possibility, in my mind, if Dalvin Cook were to be traded, Alexander Madison, who right now is going pick 104 in underdog drafts, going right in between Odell Beckham Jr. and Rashad Bateman, he probably moves up to being, what, pick 34? Alexander Madison probably goes from being like a ninth round selection to being a third round selection. So I'm fine taking him here, even if Dalvin Cook stays on the team, because when Dalvin Cook misses time, you have yourself a top five running back that week. But also with the outside chance that Dalvin Cook may get moved before the season starts, in my mind, it's a pick that really only has upside. Now, going over to our next guy, we're going to be looking at a running back that we were avoiding in 2022, but he did have a phenomenal rookie season. 
Elijah Mitchell back in 2021 was the running back 15 from a points per game perspective. He averaged 100 total yards per game and he had 18.8 carries per game. Like we saw Elijah Mitchell as a rookie be a starting running back in the NFL and the man was damn good at it. Right now he's going as the running back 41. He's going directly behind Darnell Mooney and Sky Moore. He's going directly ahead of Zay Jones and Antonio Gibson. And in my mind, this is a pick very similar to Alexander Madison, where it's really only upside, right? Because if you're going to go through and look at Christian McCaffrey, of course he's going to be on the 49ers this next year. But the 49ers don't want to use him as prime Christian McCaffrey. They're not trying to give CMC a 2019 level workload because they've learned from the mistake of the Carolina Panthers that you try to give Christian McCaffrey 30 touches a game. And as any normal human would, they're probably eventually going to get hurt. So what we saw from the 49ers at the end of this last year is instead they're going to scale back Christian McCaffrey, still use him as a three down player, but because the 49ers want to run the ball so damn much, they're going to be completely fine still giving Elijah Mitchell 30% of the touches out of this backfield and including some red zone opportunities. So what you're going to find, especially in best ball drafts for Elijah Mitchell is randomly, even when Christian McCaffrey's healthy, he can score a touchdown. He can actually make a difference in your starting lineup. Now, of course, it's going to be very difficult knowing exactly when that is. But nonetheless, I think you are going to get some stats from Elijah Mitchell compiled in games where Christian McCaffrey is healthy. However, the upside that you have with Elijah Mitchell, very similar to the upside that you have with Alexander Madison, is if the running back who was drafted in 2017 ahead of him in Christian McCaffrey were to miss time, then at that point, you have Elijah Mitchell in an offense that possibly wants to lead the NFL in rushing as the starter, where we've seen him have success before. We've seen him be a low-end running back one in fantasy. And right now, if we're drafting him as a running back four, I just think it's a price point that makes so much sense. But I think that's all I have for you all in this video. Thank you so much again for being a member of the flock and supporting the channel. Really hope you were able to get something from this. Really hope we were able to help you out in some way. And as always, if you want to get in a fantasy football draft today, of course, you can find the link to Underdog Fantasy in the comment section, as well as in the live chat. Make sure you're going ahead and taking advantage of that free LeBron James bet while you can. But thank you again, ladies and gentlemen. Really do appreciate you and really hope you have a great day.